The very first place that you'll come to or screen that you'll see after you log into Windows 7 is going to be your desktop here. Your desktop is ground zero or your starting place to begin working on your computer. So why is it called the desktop? Well, think of it like this. When you're at your office on top of your desk, you have pads of paper, you have pencils. It's your starting ground or your desktop. Well, it's no different here on your computer because your computer has a desktop. Though I very much doubt that at your office on top of your desk you'd put your trash can or recycle bin, but I'm glad it's here on my computer's desktop because if I threw something away about six months ago and I need it back, the recycle bin is easily accessible right here. I can just go ahead and open it up and pull it right back out. Now, on your computer desktop, you have probably a bunch of little images here. They're known as icons. If you don't see your computer network, it's because by default, Windows 7 doesn't put them on the desktop. If you want to put them on there or display them, then move your mouse to a blank area somewhere on your desktop and go ahead and push down the right mouse button or what we'll call a right click. Go ahead and right click. You get a menu and then move your mouse down in the menu to the bottom and push down your left mouse button or left click. It opens up a screen in the upper left hand corner. In the task pane, go ahead and click on the link change desktop icons. When you click on it, it opens up another little window you can see right here the desktop icons go ahead and check them or uncheck what you want to display or what you don't want. Of course I unchecked mine but I do want them on the desktop so I'll go ahead and check them back and click OK and then come up here in the right hand corner and click on the white X to close out of that window and they should be right there. Now your icons on the desktop you may want to move them around, arrange them if you don't like where they're at. For example if I come over here and I click on the recycle bin you can see that it's highlighted. When I click off, I deselect it or it's no longer highlighted. Click back on and it's highlighted. If I want to move that icon to somewhere in the middle of my screen, I can just come over it, click and hold my left mouse button down, and then while it's down, go ahead and move my mouse. And when I move it, notice how the ghost leaves the body here so I can tell where it's going to be dropped when I let go of the mouse. So where the ghost goes, the body follows, okay? And then if I want to move it back, click and move, or what we'll call from here on out, dragging. Click and drag your mouse and let go, and we put it right back. And then click off in a blank area to deselect it so it's no longer highlighted. Now these icons on your desktop may be icons that execute a program or open a folder or a file. And the way you do it is you can go ahead and double click on it. For example, if I come over here, and on the exercises folder, now how do I know it's a folder? Well, besides the icon kind of looks like a folder with files in it, there's another way that I'll show you in just a second, but if I double click on it really fast with my mouse, double click, it opens it up. Okay. Let me come up here and click on the white X. You can come over here and push on the right mouse button or right click and you get a menu of options for whatever you right clicked on. I right clicked on the folder, I get a menu just for that folder. In this menu, the least of which is open. So if I go ahead and left click on open, it opens up the folder and reveals all the contents within the folder here in the file list view or the list of files that you see here, including another folder there. A folder within a folder or a subfolder. Let me go ahead and close out. Now when you right click on an icon or a folder, make sure that you hold your mouse still because if you right click and you move and you're jerky, you get a different menu here. It thinks that you want to copy, move, or create a shortcut of the folder, which I don't. So hold your mouse still and right click on top of the icon. Now, like I said, I wasn't sure if this was a folder. The way you can find out if it is a folder or what type of program it is or file, when you right click on it and you get your menu here, go down to the bottom and click on properties, left click, and it brings up the properties for that folder. In other words, down below it says what type it is and it's a folder. Well, it's a file folder. It can contain files and other folders. Down below gives us the location on our computer, the size, and it contains within that folder 15 files in one folder, and then the date that it was created. When I'm finished, I can go ahead and click on the white X, and it closes out. Now, if I just want a brief summary of the properties, then just go ahead and hover over it with your mouse. In other words, don't click on it, just hover. Now, if you don't get a little pop-up, then go ahead and click on it and then move the mouse off and then go back over it. Do a hover and you see the little synopsis of the properties, the date it was created, the size, um, the folders, the files, it's got the list of names there. And then move off and the little synopsis disappears. 
and then to deselect the folder or unhighlight it, click off in a blank area. Now as we just went over, whenever you push down the right mouse button or right click, you get a menu of options depending upon what you right clicked on in a blank area or right click on a folder, a menu. Let me click off. Down at the bottom of the screen you have the start button that when you click on it you get the start menu. You could say it's a starting point because in the start menu it contains all the programs that are installed on your computer. First of all the start menu is divided into two sections. You have your left section here which contains the most recently opened programs, the top ten, so if I open up another program one of the ten will be bumped off to make room for the other one that I just recently opened. Okay, So it will drop off down at the bottom. Then over to the right we have our stable programs that never drop off like the computer, games that we play, musics folder, pictures folder and so on. And then below that we have all programs when I hover over it long enough it opens up the subfolder. I can click back to go back to the start menu the main menu, click on all programs to go back in the subfolder and in the subfolder I can scroll up and see a list of all the programs installed on my computer. Some of them when you scroll down are hidden or contained within folders. When I click on the accessories folder you can see here it opens up and lists all the contents therein, the least of which is the calculator. And like I said when I want to go back just click on the back arrow. Now while the start menu contains a list of all the programs or applications installed on your computer including the top most recently used, you do have what's called over here in the right side of the start menu the control panel and you can see that little pop-up when you hover over it. Let me go back over it again. When you click on this it'll take you to a place where you can go ahead and change settings and customize the functionality of your computer. In other words we're very controlling people. If we want to be able to control the operations of our computer including adding or removing programs, adding or removing additional users with or without passwords, well, go ahead and click on the control panel and there we go. There's the user accounts. You can add or remove more users with their own username and passwords on this computer. You can work on the hardware, the sound on the computer, uninstall programs, and so on. Then when I'm finished here, I'm just going to come up here and click on the white X to close out. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.